Happy holidays and Feliz Navidad, everyone. Ugh. I'm always happy to take a mask off when I'm in the safety of my own home. But until then, and when I'm around people, I always keep it on. And I hope that you are all, all doing the same. The second link in this email is a silly message from Grace, Maria, and I to wish you and your family the happiest of holidays. But it wouldn't be responsible or appropriate to move into a celebration and not acknowledge the challenges and the triumphs that we have experienced since we shut down and the challenges that the pandemic has presented us personally and professionally as, and as a community. So while the link is festive, I offer this on behalf of the ACS board and the faculty and staff to our ACS community. The pandemic has brought extreme disruption to our community, not just from a health standpoint, but also from an economic standpoint and from the perpetual uncertainty that it continues to present. Members of our community directly have been affected, tragically so, by the pandemic. And our heart goes out to those families who are suffering and continue to suffer. At the same time, we've been able to think deeply and reflect over these past nine months of opportunities that the pandemic presents. And I thought it would be appropriate to outline a few of those right now. On March 15th, that was the last time we were all together on campus. And had I known that that would be the last time for nine months that I'd have the chance to say hi to a family dropping off their elementary school student or joke around with the kids, listen to and laugh at a mistake I may have made or just casual conversation with a colleague. Had I known at that time that it would be nine months until I saw them again and was able to look them at an eye, not through a screen, I might have appreciated those moments a little more deeply. I think that our faculty has risen to the challenge of providing continuous education for the kids. And I wanna thank them, not only for their over 3000 hours of professional learning that allowed them to switch to a virtual platform relatively seamlessly, but also for their daily preparation to engage our students in their own learning journeys, because the faculty have experienced their own learning journeys as well. I hear often about stories from faculty about things that they're doing now that they wish they had always done and some things that they thought that they would never do. And so I thank from the bottom of my heart, all the efforts of our teachers to keep our community connected. At the same time, our staff has worked very diligently to keep our operations moving forward from an administrative standpoint. They have been able to answer telephones, uh, respond to parent inquiries, uh, keep attendance and accurate school records. All of the things they do behind the scenes, albeit in a different way, to make sure that we remain in a position to support our kids through the pandemic and afterwards. I also want to acknowledge the success of our students. They, of all of us, seem to be the most resilient and able to move into learning in a digital way, uh, perhaps easier than we imagined. Asynchronous and synchronous learning 
words and techniques that were not in our vocabulary or in our tool bag have been leveraged by our teachers, but they have been embraced by our kids. And our students are moving through our curriculum in a way that we never anticipated, but so effectively that we're confident that we are doing everything we can with their help and support to have minimized any loss of learning. To our parents, I can't thank them enough. They have sat alongside their students and assisted and facilitated their learning along with their teachers in a totally new way. Sometimes I hear that ACS parents aren't engaged, but my experience these past nine months is exactly the opposite. In fact, they have never been more engaged in the school and in what their students are doing and experiencing on a daily basis. And I welcome their ideas and suggestions, and they continue, you all, continue to share those with me openly so that we can continue our continuous improvement journey. Parents have done all of this while at the same time maintaining their households, navigating challenges associated with their workplace and their jobs, navigating the challenges of government restrictions and quarantines and closings and openings and the emotional stress and anxiety that come along with continual disruption and uncertainty. An amazing effort. And I am no more appreciative now than I ever have been in my life of the importance of the ACS community and the way we have been able to collectively support our children and put on that smile for our kids while being honest about the hardship that the pandemic presents us all as individuals and as families so that they themselves can feel empowered to take charge of their own learning to offer their ideas and find agency in their own experience. I wanna hold on to those things as we navigate past the pandemic. There are reasons to be optimistic. I'm so thankful that people a lot smarter than all of us have found a vaccine and the global distribution of this vaccine is imminent. We don't know when we will be vaccinated, but we do know that once we're vaccinated, we will come out of this pandemic. And so the question is, what are we going to take with us into a post pandemic world? And what are some of the things that we're gonna leave behind? I know personally, I've benefited from a closer connection with my family during the quarantines and the pandemics. I have a closer connection to my colleagues and I have a deeper appreciation of the strength of the ACS community in helping individuals and our community at large navigate these challenges together. I think that if I could go back to that March 15th date, I might have given an extra big squeeze. I might have made that hug a little bit stronger. I might have taken more time to have the casual conversation with the person, maybe identify a need in them and address it more intentionally. Those are some of the things I wanna carry through the pandemic. At the same time, our school has been also reflecting. What are inefficiencies that we've been perpetuating and how can we shed those to serve our learners better? How can we simplify processes and systems so that parents are informed all the time in real time and uh, real time about matters that affect them? How can we engage faculty and students and parents in decisions that the school makes that matter to them? These are some of the things that I want to carry through the pandemic. I also want to shed some of a propensity to judge people, prejudices that I didn't know existed. I wanna make sure that we're paying attention to equity 
and inclusion and diversity in a new and deliberate way that helps every child feel respected and part of our community. We were very strong in these areas prior to the pandemic, but we're learning that there's always work to be done to make sure that every individual experiences a personalized learning experience and that attention to the emotional intelligence of students and their well-being is even more important now. So as we look back on 2020 and enter 2021, I hope that all of us take a moment to celebrate wholeheartedly with gratitude the gifts that we've been given and at the same time acknowledge the hardship within ourselves and those around us so that healing can take place. The first week of January will be a time when you will receive more communication about the biosecurity measures that ACS is taking, again with a target date of opening on February 2nd. That said, we now see COVID numbers are rising around the world and in the country. We see countries closing borders to European countries, the UK specifically. We see a new strain emerging. And so we continue to be on the lookout with a watchful eye of what the government is going to ask schools to do and our ability to ensure to the greatest extent possible, a safe learning environment for your children. So you'll be receiving more information about that in early January. Until then, I challenge you all to stay strong for the sake of yourselves and your children. Give voice to any struggles that you may be having to those that support you. Seek solace in the fact that you've made it this far and you will likely make it further through the pandemic. With that, on behalf of our community, I wish you all a very happy and safe holiday. Please make sure you're doing everything you can to ensure a safe environment for you and your loved ones. Feliz Navidad.